Yo, what's going on everyone? It's Garrett and I hope you guys are having a great summer so far. And I thought I would do a tutorial just like this just because I know a lot of you are going on summer vacations, you guys want to get into photography, and just a lot of things are going on this summer. So this tutorial is going to be breaking down how to use Lightroom in an effective way to make your images just that much better. Now right here on screen you guys are going to see an image I found off of Google. It's from Utah. It's basically is showcasing a, um, a big rock in the mountains in the background. This is after Lightroom. And in this tutorial, we're going to be going over Lightroom and Photoshop. And Photoshop's only going to be used to do a little bit of blurness. Um, not a lot, just a little bit. And right here is going to be the before image that you guys can basically see that it is very dull, doesn't have a lot of color to it. And if you guys are using a high quality camera on raw images, sometimes this is actually what you get out of your camera. And sometimes you don't think that this is what you want to upload onto Instagram, onto Facebook, and bring your photography up to the next level. So right here is going to be the post. And it's really easy to do. Um, we're gonna be going over just the basics of Lightroom. We're not gonna be going into a very in-depth things like presets and using um, different kind of things to make images, you know, have a certain tone to it or that cinematic feel. If you guys do want that, I can go over that in another tutorial. But this is gonna be basically just making your images just seem more professional, seem just a higher tier, and then you guys can show off to your friends. And you guys can do this on your iPhone. It's very difficult to do. I can make a tutorial separate for that on um, you know Apple products and Android products because I have both and uh, it's very difficult to do um, some apps allow you to do it but I definitely recommend if you guys have a computer or a laptop and are fortunate enough uh, to have Lightroom you guys can just throw in your images onto your computer and do it yourself so let's go straight to the basic of before everything so when you open up Lightroom you guys can click your library and then you guys can basically just import your image you guys can do anything you want um you guys I usually just like sliding into here and letting it upload um, some people um, put it onto the desktop, they click on desktop in the folders and they go through there. But um, once you have your image selected, all you have to do is click develop and the image is going to pop up just like this. So right here, if you guys are unfamiliar with Lightroom, it's going to see a little bit confusing. However, we're only going to stick to the sides right here. And of course, this is my before thing, so I'm going to reset my image. So I'm done. I'm straight back to where I started. And we're going to go through everything from top to bottom. So you guys can click on the basics and there's going to be a bunch of things here on um, temp, tint, exposure, contrast, and everything below that. Um, there's also a black and white setting, which you guys can use to make your image just straight up black and white. If you click on it, you'll see that it goes black and white. And then you guys can you know, change the contrast and exposure of everything like that. However, we're going to go straight into the color. Um, you guys can use as shot, auto, or custom. I like to use as shot. That's just my personal preference. And then we're going to go straight into the bottom things. So right here, learning Lightroom is going to help you guys tremendously with anything because all of these terms are going to be used in Photoshop, Lightroom, um, After Effects, anything you're going to be doing with design except for Illustrator is going to have basically anything like this. So you can basically click on these little, um, I want to call them like little eyedrops basically, and you guys can drag them left and right. And because if you have ever been to Utah or live out west or you're from the United States, um, you know that these rocks have this kind of orange glow to them. So I'm going to bring the temperature to the right just a little bit to make sure that it has that still orange glow to it. And for the tint, that's basically the same thing. You can bring it to the right, which is going to make it more orange or more purple, excuse me, or to the left, which is more green. I tend to like to leave it, you know, straight in the middle. I don't like to touch the tint unless I'm um, using, you know, leaves or a forest or anything like that. So for exposure, if you guys have known in my past tutorials, I've always used exposure. I think it's a great thing and it's going to help bring out light and darks. So for this case, I'm going to bring out just a light, just a 0.24, nothing too crazy. And then for the contrast, we can bring it to the right and it'll basically bring out that background from the foreground and it'll basically separate everything just a little bit more. Now, if you guys want to go back and see what you've done so far, all you have to do is click the backspace on your keyboard. It's a slash. The um, it's not like the regular slash where the question mark is. It's this backslash where the um, straight line is. All you do is click that, and in the top right hand corner, you're gonna see before. Click that again, it goes right back to where we started. So we're not really that far into Lightroom yet, and you can see some results already, which is very um satisfying when you're doing this. So now we can click highlights and I like bringing my highlights just a little bit down to the left just because I want to just separate all these dark colors from each other. Shadows, um, you can bring that up but I like bring it down as well just so I can start separating things a little bit more. Whites, I like bringing to the right 
just because now it's going to start making everything glow just a little bit more. You can see when you do little things like this. Now, if we bring it all over to the left, you can see that it goes darker. Bring it over to the right, it goes a lot brighter. So I like to have like an even middle of like a, maybe a 33. And of course, hitting that backslash is really good for making me know what I want to do more. So after that, you can go to the blacks. Um, if you bring it to the right, it's going to make it a little bit brighter to the left darker. Um, I like bringing it to the left because now if there's a, um, a shadow on the rock, if there's a shadow on your person you're doing, you're going to have that shadow come out on each side. So it's very good. You know, I personally like doing landscapes and um, photography images like this. I can do more portrait styles if you guys want something like that. But um, this is basically to me dedicated to maybe landscapes. So down below that is going to be presence and it's it's basically self-explanatory clarity is going to be that sharpen that you guys like to use or that you know that blur um nothing too crazy maybe you know plus one to plus five maximum um unless you guys want to dull your image like a bunch then you can bring that down but i like to use you know plus one to plus five that's basically my range of where to stay in vibrance of course um is basically color and you know i can bring that to the right a little bit and now the color starts to come out saturation i hope you guys know what saturation is and uh you know if you're putting the vibrance up a lot you don't really need a lot of saturation so you know actually my saturation is going to go below it's going to be a negative two and then my vibrance is going to be plus 17. now this is to balance everything out and then if we hit backspace again you can see that the color is starting to more come out especially in the mountains background and then right here on the right side of the rock and of course you can mess with this yourself and then you can put the saturation up a little bit more and it's basically how you want your image to look. And if we go through the whole entire list, all you have to do is click this arrow right now. And then we're basically going to go drop down the next menu. So these are going to be the curves and tone curves are basically, you know, what's going to be happening. And you guys can see what you knew or see when you bring things to the right, it's going to have that um, brighter look to it. So right here is going to be where I'm um, looking mostly because it has the most white. And you want it a little bit brighter, a little bit darker. I like to put it a little bit brighter because it you know, brings it more alive. The darks, of course, I'm going to bring it to the left just to kind of create more contrast. And contrast is a really big thing inside of your imagery. And of course, shadows, you know, I like to mess with all of these. Some people like to leave some alone. I like going through everything. Um, HSL, you can really mess with. Um, it's basically going individual color saturations. So you can do the reds, the oranges, the yellows, greens. Now this has a lot of blues and you know yellows and oranges in it, so editing those blues and greens sometimes might not really help. And the dark blue is going to be the most of what we're going to be touching. And now there's going to be some things like purple and magenta. You're going to see, you know, why do I need this? And right here in the back right hand corner, you're going to see that there's purple and magenta. There's usually all these, excuse me, colors in every single image that you take, and you don't want to make them too much just because sometimes it will make your image look a little bit um crazy. So split toning, um, I don't typically touch unless I'm doing C pictures. Now these are highlights and shadows. So if we click on this, we can do a highlight of let's just say um, like a dark, maybe a dark orange like that. And you can mess with it here. You can change the hue. Now this looks really weird since there's so many multiple colors. So I usually take that down. Um, shadows, of course, you can you know figure that out yourself. It's basically what color overlay is going to do with the shadows. Now, I like to do typically that kind of stuff in Photoshop. Um, I'm mostly good in Photoshop. Um, I know Lightroom, I know you know Premiere, I know Illustrator, I know all the Adobe programs, but I mostly do a lot of these um, big overlay effects inside of Photoshop, which we're going to hop into after this. So details is going to be sharpening, noise reduction, and then color. Um, sharpening is basically self-explanatory, how sharp you want the image to be, how big you want those cuts to you know, be noticeable plus 13 maximum guys um actually excuse me plus 20 maximum because once you start going past 20 it's going to look um too sharpened and then you're going to get that kind of fake look to it you still want to keep that organic um photography thing that nothing's ever perfect noise reduction is basically um you know you're going to start blurring the image and making things a little bit more um kind of like um plastered have like a mosaic look to it and then color um, you know, there's nothing really too crazy about this. You guys can edit this yourself. And then we're going down the list still. Lens correction. There's distortion that I don't touch. The defringe, which sometimes is a lot and handy, but I don't touch that either. A lot of the stuff, as I, like I said, I use in Photoshop. 
and then vignetting is basically if you want a um kind of a photography um dark shadow around the edges which i like to do so going down the list there's not much left there's effects which is like highlights and stuff like that and that's basically me bringing this to the left to kind of darken a little bit more we can do a little bit of a grain which is going to make it kind of have like a little texture to it or we can leave it the same and then we can um make everything better and then dehaze is really sick just because it can basically make your image you know a little bit more saturated and bring things out so now that we have that done there's more things we can do this is going to be a cool effect there's um the graduated filters so what we can do is we can actually take this right here and i'm going to do it like this i'm going to bring just the side right here and then we can go through everything what i like doing is actually grabbing the contrast and exposure in just certain areas like this just because i can start bringing out more color you can see that you can start bringing out more of those blues and whatever is inside and then you, on the bottom and then you can just click done and then you basically have more color on each side you can do this to both sides now all you have to do is basically do the same thing like this and then you can click done because a lot of the um, effects are going to be um, saved over of course you can edit them separate just to kind of make sure that it's to your liking and then click done and then you guys are going to have your image now if you want to go back and see what you've done all you have to do is click that back slash one more time and you can see that it's a totally different image it looks so much better so what we're going to do now is actually hop over into photoshop and then i'll show you guys just some things you can do so all you have to do is hit export and then you're going to export to let's just say your desktop um you know you can ask what to do file name stuff like that i like to just put on um, let's just say tutorial and then just hit export and if you're gonna do um sizes everything usually exports into the highest quality possible and then you're gonna have the export file in the top left hand corner and once you're done all you have to do is click on photoshop and then let's get it so like i said if you want to find images to use all you have to do is hop over to google and type in um like i put utah mountains non-edited photo and you're gonna have a bunch of things just like this um this one would have been a really great one to use if you want to get the full image all you have to do is click view image and uh, this is not edited as well you guys can tell by the sky and how the colors look so this is really cool things to mess with so let's hop into photoshop and then open up this image now we're going to go scroll down through here and to find the tutorial section of what we'll be doing and all you have to do is double click unlock that layer hit ctrl j to kind of duplicate the layer to make sure that you have a backup just in case you start screwing things up now what i like to do right away is go to blur and then go to lens blur and i think a lens blur is very um useful just like this now you don't want to use it too much maybe like six or seven maximum for this kind of style image and then what we're going to do is we're going to hit e on our keyboard go to our eraser put the hardness to zero grab the size up just a little bit and then we're going to erase let's just say the we're going to erase the um, main thing, which is going to be the rock. And we're going to erase kind of like the foreground in front of it, the mountains a little bit. And then you can give it a couple clicks inside the um, the sky. So now if you hide the layer, you can see that it has this blur image around the sides. And then you can hit Control E to merge. Now you can hit Control J again and go to File Image Saturation. And now this is when the colors that start really coming out that you want to use and then we can go like this and now i'm going to erase everything but the sky and the reason behind this because if we hide the sky you're going to see that the colors come out more and now basically like i said just kind of click around in the side of the sky and you're going to have these kind of um these blue swatches just kind of splash around everywhere which look really nice and then hit Control j again and now there's a bunch of things you guys can else do um some people like to go and put into like a noise add some noise to kind of make that style some people like adding lens flares in their work and you know always put the brightness down and it just basically adds like a little bit of um a little flare to it but personally i like to take that away and then lastly if you want to add just a little bit more color to let's just say your rock want to make it a little bit more orange hit Control j once again saturation bring that to the orange side erase everything except for the rock and then you want to click just in places 
and then right here you're gonna have a final image hit Control e on the final layers to merge everything and then you're basically going to be done now i am going to do the honors of basically showing you guys the before image if i can find it and you guys are basically going to actually see you know what happened you know what was this worth watching and here's the example guys this is the before and this is the after and now it's a huge difference i think that you guys are really going to like this tutorial i think that it's really amazing to know and learn Photoshop and Lightroom are amazing programs you guys can use together. Now, Adobe does have this in a program that you guys can use that has a three-in-one special. I want to say it's Photoshop, Lightroom, and Illustrator. It's called like the um, photography or the designer or the photography section or maybe it's premiere not illustrator whatever the case might be but i think it's only 19.99 a month and it's really helpful for people that want to get into adobe and this is not sponsored at all i just want to say that adobe has been you know really good with making their programs they're basically the elite um software provider for any photography like this so this is going to be the tutorial this is going to be the end and i hope you guys really enjoy this if you did leave a thumbs up let me know in the comment section below if this helped out. Also, you guys can link down in the description, and or excuse me, in the comments below what you made. You guys can use a print screen and uh, just basically show me if this tutorial worked. I want to see the before and afters. All you have to do is basically go like this, and then you can just maybe cut it right in half and then show me the after like that. Or you guys can go ahead and send me both on Twitter. I want to see what you guys have made just so I can see if this tutorial helped any of you. But other than that, that's basically going to be the tutorial. Like I said, I hope you guys are having a great summer. There's going to be a bunch of videos coming out, streams and stuff like that. And I really hope you guys enjoyed that I'm back. And thank you guys so much for viewing my videos, liking and subscribing. It means the world to me. So other than that, guys, it's been Garrett. Enjoy this tutorial and I'll see you later. Peace out.